Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Brian Howard. Um, my company is BR Howard and Associates. Um, we are conservators. We've uh, started our career working for the PHMC and we have the good fortune of actually uh, continuing to do some projects for them. Uh, this is a mid 19th century steam engine that uh, we examined uh, last fall and found while it was operable or made operable with an electric motor to give some eye, the visitor some idea of how it operates. Um, we found it did have some issues. Obviously there was uh, some concerns about how it was being lubricated and, uh, and in some cases excess lubrication. Uh, the feeling was it was better to have too much than to have a damage cause, so I understand the philosophy. So, But we were able to remove a lot of the, the unnecessary lubricant, but we found that um, there were areas of active corrosion and that the, the masonry base um, had also started to have some crumbling towards the back corners. In addition to that, we found that the cylinder had actually slightly tilted. It was out of level because of a deteriorated wooden beam or rail that the whole, the whole machine sits on. Um, what we found is that this had been repaired. Um, we thought it was probably like an asbestos putty, but um, with disassembly, we found that it was primarily brick and mortar, and it was a, a fairly modern brick, so it wasn't something that was done perhaps when this was fully operational, but something done maybe during the restoration in the, in the early 20th century. So what, what we did uh, in order to, to take care of the beam, we, um, so we have a white, oak, white oak timber that we were able to use, which is the same material that originally was used. And um, so we had to uh, create a tripod lift to lift the cylinder, so we had to disconnect the plumbing, uh, steam pipes, uh, the shaft, and then we also had to uh, loosen the bearings so we could, we could raise the wheel as well. And so the, the machine was partially disassembled, lifted, the old crumbled timber and masonry was removed, a new piece was fabricated back at our shop, and then installed here. Um, since that time now, it's a matter of realigning all the pieces of the, of the steam engine so we get smooth operation. We've actually found that there's a fair amount of wear, which is not real surprising. So as we put it back together and tightened up some of the connections, um, when we were disassembling, we found they were quite loose, and we weren't. We thought, well, that's not necessary. We can tighten them up when we put it back together. So we did that, and then found out that it didn't really want to run as well. So uh, we loosened some of those connections again, and it and it operates quite well now. At this point, you know, once the masonry was done, it was about you know coming in with some whitewash, you know, just to kind of blend it all back together. We had to do some disassembly of the wall. We found that there were. There was a diagonal brace that wasn't in the photograph. I think that was probably from the 30s, as far as I know. And that diagonal brace, once we removed it to get the boards off the wall, found it was all modern wire nails. So, and it was probably put up because there may have been some chafing or this, as the wheel turned, it broke against it. But once the boards are back, there's no contact. So we just um, talked to museum staff and have decided to remove that and we've documented what parts were original and what parts have been replaced so now um, once it's back together uh, what we decided to do we also found in cleaning that this was a uh, dark green and red machine and uh, perhaps parts have been repainted but with cleaning we now begin to see that there's some color um, so fully clean degreased and then we put on uh, an acrylic resin, uh, Acrylite B48N, and that particular resin uh, is formulated for metal surfaces, particularly iron. So we've brush applied that, allowed that to fully dry, and now we've, now we've given two coats of a paste wax. And the paste wax is a, just a microcrystalline wax that's not bleached, so it's kind of an amber color. And it has um, CRC SB400, which is a, an anti, corrosion additive that we just mix into the wax. It's, think of uh, WD-40, but just thicker. So that's added to the, to the wax mixture to even give it a different or a higher degree of corrosion resistance. What we're doing now is with the photographic information, we're gonna be trying to locate, um, there were some, some oil cups that are missing in three, I think five different locations. So we have the photographic evidence to know what they should be. So we're gonna re, find these and, and we'll mark them as, re, not reproductions, but as non-original, but they'll have the same appearance. So we'll be adding those back to this machine so the lubricant can be added through those grease cups and oiling cups rather than something that has to be applied. 
and that's something that we'll be uh, we're doing a little bit of research. Obviously, we're really thankful for for uh, the internet and eBay, where you can find anything you want and then some things you don't want. But that's where we're going next. So once those are installed, we'll uh, you know try to get a um, a lubricant or an oil that has a high enough viscosity that it's not running through, but it's just slowly seeping through. And we'll probably have some sort of cotton in those cups to hold the oil and let it just slowly drip upon the slides. Um, the only maintenance you're required is just making sure that those cups are filled and that's probably like once a month taking a look at them. And um, ideally, a coat of paste wax um, with the SP400 formula mix would probably be, be applied once every year, every couple of years, it'd probably go a long way to make sure that there's no active corrosion. That's, um, that's pretty much where we are. Any questions you might have that I can try to answer? Well, thank you very much, Brian, for explaining uh, what you uh, were able to do with the engine. Uh, it certainly looks a lot better, and, and we hope that it will be able to function uh, actively in our exhibit uh, for the next uh, 150 years. So thank you. Good enough. Thank you.